Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack Production. Today we have our, what we're calling Heat 3, which is Austin using Cell Surge versus Jake playing his Ginyu Force deck. And with us today, we have Jimmy, Jake, Austin, Dark today, and like always, Fluff. Wait, who, who's Jimmy? Uh, this is a different day, so you're not Biscetti Man today. I, I don't think I was ever Biscetti Man. <laughs> Uh, He's buggy, not Pusketty. Yeah, it happens when you have a speech impediment sometimes. Torment. <laughs> really does. Yeah. Alright, well there's their haze. Apparently they aren't really active today. <laughs> um, like always, if you enjoyed the content, hit those buttons because we all know people have button fetishes like Jimmy. How oh. do you know about my fetishes? Because you tell us repeatedly. Oh. You vocalize Guys, them. I need, I need to go check on S, uh, SCP-11325. If you know that reference, good for you. If you don't, too bad. You missed out on a good year. It was. So. Oh, my God. I didn't know Bancroft had a Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> he, only added it, he only added it after they took the Just for clarification. After they took the one you got out. No, it's probably good because we might still be in the <laughs> first 30 seconds. It's probably good he cut out. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to a game. Uh, all three. Is tapping some energy one and three. playing a Zarbon from the drop area turn one. One thing Just I have to told people me. about this deck that I really like is even if you're like, this isn't the most optimal hand, but I like what I have, you can still, like, for situations, you can keep it because you search so much with your leader that if you don't find what you need, you're just not going to win that game. You weren't meant to. Yeah. And I think it's just better off to go ahead and give him the choice to get the Zarbon out of the way here. All right, back to the top, and it was not again you. Unfortunately, you the quick. camera angle is a little bit awkward. Welcome back, Bancroft. Hey, let me cut you off real so, quick. Uh, I just want to apologize, people, because the zoom of this particular uh, Heat 3 is a lot different than normal. Because I forgot to adjust the camera before recording this one. Yeah, Bancroft, we, we, we know y'all suck. It's okay. So, I need to go back and take care of this SCP. Sorry. All right. Bancroft's beating his meat right now, by the way. It's, re it's really awkward. He's going to cut the audio out of, like, the YouTube release, but we can hear everything right now. Yeah, it's... It's... It's deer season? Question mark? I don't know how we're going to save him from that one. I really don't know how we're going to save him from that one, Jimmy. Um... <laughs> oh my God. I, I will say, though, like, uh, when, when I saw you first play the, uh, the Ginyu deck, I was actually very intrigued. And then I watched you play it, and I'm like, this, this actually works. I like that. Because it's not very often when you get, like, to use that entire engine to its fullest. Oh, no, you're you're actually right, and it took a lot of effort. It took me, like, two months of testing, and Fluff helped me with the list a little bit, and it really took a lot of effort to get this deck to, to the point where it's at. I tried not to, like, copy any lists or any, like, videos I saw online, and uh, honestly, I think even with all the effort I've put into it, it's kind of, I think, at the peak uh, performance level which is solid locals deck, but don't expect to run into it at top table at a regionals. Whenever I, I, those happening. I honestly feel like this deck can catch a lot of people off guard because when you described this deck to me, or you told me that you were working on Ginyu, I immediately just thought this was the Cell X Turbo variant of the deck. And even to the point where you brought it to the table and actually put it down, I was like, okay, like this, this is going to play like Cell X Turbo. And then you completely flipped the, the entire thing on its head for me. Uh, so I feel like against a uneducated player against this particular deck, I feel like you could really like Dougie on some people with it. Oh, and that was definitely uh, more of the experience I had week one with the deck. I think you guys helping me with the list and uh, now having multiple weeks experience against it kind of hurts its performance at locals, but Maybe you're right. Maybe it can catch some people off guard. Because, it, I mean, it certainly did me. Like, I kind of knew what you were doing with the deck. Like, I did not help you a lot with the list. I don't even think I've seen the list until you put it down. Uh, I just heard you talking a lot about it, and I was really caught off guard by how explosive the deck can be. Mm -hmm. On, like, a I solid hit, like, this deck can go off 
like it, it, almost like storm esque in the early yeah. uh, early determines. Well, I played I played Ginyu during the set ten format, and I felt like I had Ginyu at a really good spot where it was just it was solid, it was competitive, it could irk out wins, it could catch people off guard, and then Jake took it to an entirely different level. And, like, the two lists aren't even comparable anymore. And I think that just goes to show, like, the versatility. Like, you might look at Ginyu and go, wow, so much of this deck is is dedicated specifically to that Ginyu line. But even with all that space dedicated, and it just shows how smooth the deck is, there's so much wiggle room for tech and player choice, like, player preference meta preference it, it it really is amazing what this deck can offer i i think that has a lot to do with the color it is being green green has so many good out cards yeah. that you can just throw them in and it fixes whatever issue you have so like a card like dormant potential it fixes it fixes your defense in one card yep that's exactly like, what i was about to say uh the fact that all of Green's defensive tools, uh, Charismatic Villain, Dormant Potential Unleashed, and Shocking Death Ball can all be activated for zero energy really lets you devote most of your deck to the Ginyu package. And similarly with Cell Surge, uh, minus Dormant Potential Unleashed, uh, those cards let you uh, donate or dedicate, excuse me, more of your deck to your cell package and i think mm -hmm. green really right now is the color of a lot of the uh tech options like you were mentioning and if you notice the popular decks in green at least at our locals go tanks ginyu cell they're all almost theme decks in how large the uh main portion packages of the deck are yeah i, I i've been building a lot of decks lately like i've been sticking to the main two but almost every deck that i've built i'm trying to shove a green package in just to be able to run at least the frieza because of how good that card is in so many matchups and how so it just it, it just turns off so many decks it's like you can push like aggro decks into the late game just with that one card because they don't want to drop their bomb and just have it being popped by Frieza for absolutely zero energy. Or in the case of the Jack, sometimes they don't have control of when that time agent hits the board and mm -hmm. they can just run it right into a charismatic without really having control over it. Yeah, and my uh, matchup with Bancroft when I was playing Chi Lai, uh, I was able to wipe the board with a uh, pretty black hole, which also runs double duty in a lot of decks. Yes. Uh, like, all the green cards just have so many good effects that fix so many matchups. And that's why I think we're seeing green being so popular, uh, at least at the local level. I know in some of the bigger events, like Gotenks is still, uh, is still topping well. Uh, there's other green decks that are topping, but the local level green is just so, so strong um, because you don't really know what you're going to see at the locals because not everybody's going to be playing competitively. Not everybody's going to be playing jank decks. Uh, green really, green is really favored by this, like like Jake mentioned earlier, you know, the popularity of, of green decks that we've seen at our locals, Gotink, Cell, Ginyu, Harutagarn, Brawly, um, hit pod in the best of one format green has this unprecedented mm -hmm. ability mm -hmm. to have just very solid generic answers to a majority of problems and and like, like you said dormant potential dormant potential cleans up a boonie tokens it prevents mm -hmm. shit like aod from just spamming you out charismatic villain solves boss monsters um the discard keeps your opponent from, you know, making your opponent discard is making them make choices. And based on the choices that they're making can inform you about what is in their hand or how desperate they are. Like if they discard a really good card, you know, the rest of the cards in their hand are really good or mm -hmm. probably part of their win condition. And like green just problem solves so well in relation to the other things happening in the meta right now. 
I, I think a lot of we we've talked a lot at our locals about the frustration with green, and I feel like ma- the main frustration that comes from green is that it wants to do all these things that it's not going to allow your opponent to do. Yes. So Jake can sit there and storm off like crazy with Ginyu, put in a ton of attacks. Like you're seeing him swarm the board right here for zero energy. Uh, I mean, he gets popped, obviously. We're talking about uh, Frieza and how good it is, and it just cleared off probably your best card in the deck, Goldo. But he can tap out all of his energy, storm off, then pass turn, and if whatever reason Cell wants to storm off, if it even can, he can just drop dormant potential and say, no, you're not going to get to do that. Yeah. I think and, he does do that once this game. I'm just that, like, okay. Yeah, and that's like that's the annoying thing against Green is that it can do so much, but not allow you to do the same thing back to it. Which, of course, that's just what a deck wants to do. It's defensive. It also has aggro. It's best of both worlds. But that's really annoying as a player showing up to locals every week uh, and just having to face down Green. I um, personally, I used to be a heavy aggro player, but playing cooler and being so dedicated to it, I've now become more of a control player. And personally, I never had an issue with cards like uh, Dorm Potential and all that because I wouldn't attack much. You know, if I did, I'm like, okay, well, that's not my main theme. I'm not worried about it, you know. Mm-hmm. And But I understand how frustrating it can be when I played that one Burn Han deck I made. I was like, oh my gosh. Fuck this card. Yeah. <laughs> I finally understood why people hated it and why it was so good. Because it's like, oh, well, I'll just not, not worry about it. It's fine. And then yeah. the frustration, I, mean, I understand. Yeah, thank goodness they used an iconic scene from the anime for such a good card, though. It seems yeah. like they're getting better at that as the mm-hmm. game goes on. Like, I, of course. Kamehameha is the most disappointing card in the whole game. Like, that should be a staple in every deck in the color it's in. Like, it should be Sensu Bean level, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's one thing I was happy about with like with the uh, the uh, if an attack rares, you know, like the Earth Destroying Kamehameha. Yeah. You know, all those cards are really good in their respective colors, and they're yeah, they and they're yeah. very good, like moments from the anime. Yeah, my only issue with those cards, and it's just so petty, is that we don't have a good yellow Vegeta leader to use Final Flash with. I yeah. know. It's so like, sad. Yeah, like we have a good uh, a good leader that matches every other card except for Vegeta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's kind of disappointing. Like maybe they could have like I mean I I am a baby fan, but they could have just made that like revi- like revenge final flash and then put baby on the card so I could play you with know, my baby deck. My, but you know, my hope is that Bandai are listening to my pleas to give Yellow the things that it needs to be successful in the format, and it's going to be a Vegeta leader like. Nah, we just need more baby cards. Shut up. You shut up. You I shut think up. when yellow, yellow was strongest when it had that identity of a lot of, like, dual attacking yeah. and a lot of, like, rest moding uh-huh. stuff. Like, HOM, uh, Trader Dende at some level. You know, there's a lot of dual attack double strike in that deck. And The red yellow baby also. Yeah, yeah. S- set in, 10 was great for yellow and in, as well. Like, it, but in recent sets, we haven't had a lot of that big yellow bombs with triple attack or dual attack or something sick like that. Yeah. I, I think it just comes down to Bandai doesn't want to recreate the Hide of Mastery meta, where it was if you, you either play Hide of Mastery or you play counter Hide of Mastery. And uh, think- playing through that meta, I do look back on it fondly just because of the time that that meta was in, but I would hate to play that meta again. <laughs> well, I think with cards like Dormant Potential, um, Kakunsa, uh, Violet Rays, the game, there's a lot of more, uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot more yeah, options in the game now. now. Uh, and I think it's safe for them to print more of those crazy effects in yellow. I know we're so far away from this game. Um <laughs> You guys have seen a lot of Ginyu gameplay at this point. Uh, Austin, would you like to opine on your six cell plays at this well, point? Well, getting ready to say it's very much the theme would happen that night because that entire night we're laughing and joking around the entire night. And we're <laughs> everyone's so far away from those like two games going on with five people around, and we're just like this little small area right here. And we're just laughing, having a good time. We're just joking. None of us were really paying, like really caring too much. We're just having fun. And I think it's very much the theme of this, but honestly, uh, everybody in the comments petitioned Bancroft to put uh, the, the original audio. audio. 
the yes, raw audio. The raw this audio. Game. I or that was specifically, a... just a, just a few moments. Uh, there's one thing where I was talking about uh, Imagine Dragons. I feel like that needs to be uh, that needs one. to be raw audio here. <clears throat> this was just a, this was honestly like this is when I started up like you know this is still the same day where I had the migraine and this was when I finally got rid of it. I was just having fun and just I was like you know what just play and have fun. Like it was probably the most free I felt playing Dragon Ball Super card game because I'm unfortunately a very competitive person. I don't seem like it, but I'm a very competitive person and it's because I'm incredibly hard on myself. I'm never mad at my opponent. I'm only ever mad at myself. I feel that. And it's great to hear because you've been so frustrated lately. Like that's awesome, dude. Yeah, like I was I had a blast in this game. I was laughing so much. It's like, you know what? I don't even care if I win or lose. I was having so much fun and I was just giddy to play a deck where I didn't feel like, like I, like I said, I think the last video where I'm slamming my head through three walls trying to win. <laughs> and it just felt nice to not feel like I'm just really shit at the game. <laughs> I can honestly say, though, that I'm exactly the same way when I play. Like, I'm never mad at the person who beats me. I'm mad at me for overthinking the crap that I was actually trying to do in the first place. I feel like it's a lot of our play. Shot. It's, it's honestly like when you go through the, your entire deck and you have to shuffle it up and get it ready and then you try to get that one card you need to start everything out with but you don't see it whatsoever throughout every time you draw or even you keep pushing your own draws just to make sure you're trying to get to that card that's yeah. literally been my issue with most decks that I typically have played with it's just like where's my card but you know it just never happens that way you know luck of the draw yeah. it happens I think oh, yeah, I think I think like like I've been I've been pretty stressed out with like personal oh. life stuff going. Real quick, anyway. sorry, Fluff. This was a big point that Jake and I were talking. We were all distracted, laughing. So I'm like, wait, you can't do that. You're like, you can't do that on the unawakened side. I'm like, oh my god, it's right. I'm like, oh my god, you're right. <laughs> we were just all talking and laughing. I'm like, man, this video's cursed. This video's screwed because. <laughs> We're both laughing and just joking around, and I'm just like, we don't know what's going on. Luckily, I nothing... cut the video off. I lost you cheated. <laughs> <laughs> we, rectify it. we rectify it. It's understandable. <laughs> and like, nothing changed. I was like, oh my god, that's why I get shuffled my deck real quick. And I was like, shuffled it real good. I'm like, I can't believe that just happened. We were all talking and laughing and goofing off, and my brain just went like 10 miles away. Sorry, Fluff. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to say that in the moment. No, it's all good. Um, I was just saying that, like, you know, you mentioned you had a migraine. I had been dealing with some like some some personal things related to work and and and, and stuff like that. And like it was kind of rounds like this where we got to goof around and like just everyone was laughing that I was like reminded about why like I'm glad I got involved with this group and this game because it's like, okay, this is why I keep coming back. Like the game is fun, but like the people. It's yeah, the people. for sure. We could be playing Fury of Dracula and have just as much fun. You know what I mean? Like, right. oh, absolutely. Dragon Ball is great, but I feel like even after, like, people quit playing Dragon Ball, if that happens, like, Dragon Ball could be one of the big three. Like, I think it's fun enough to. Yeah, it, it is definitely fun enough. If I, people I, who have left the game would come back and give it yeah. another shot. It's so much better than it used to be. Uh -huh. Wow. So much more interaction. But uh, I feel like we'll be playing games together for a long time. I would agree with that. Absolutely. There. Yeah, I, I, it was it was around the time when a lot of shops started shutting down because of coronavirus uh, that we started jumping on Zoom calls and would hang out during when our locals would be in. And we wouldn't even play Dragon Ball most of the time. We would just hang out. And I think it was, uh, was it? Aaron that said this but it's like think about this if this was not Dragon Ball and this was any other game we would not all be so chill just sitting here chilling yeah like that that's what I've loved about the Dragon Ball community is how everybody that plays it at least that I've met and I'm sure you guys have met as well have all been super chill they just like the game because they like the game it's not some crazy like I play because I want to be the best like everybody just is so so into this game for 
the game itself and nobody's not. trying to make a career yeah. out of it yeah and speaking real quick i just want to talk about a moment right here so i use cell second effect not the one to put in rest mode but the ko card and discard a card jake had the bardog green ape in his hand and i was like yeah, i was thinking of that last card I almost didn't do it but like, you know what i will and i'm so glad i did otherwise that would have been a hard loss for me the previous turn, I had put it on top of my deck with Golden Frieza, so he couldn't rip it from me with Rebrianne as well. So I was, like, setting everything up perfectly to try and survive the Xeno Cell. Oh. Yeah, that is brutal. That is very brutal. That That's, that's like, hand control annoyance times 100 when it comes to that. <laughs> like, you can play perfectly, then hand control says, nah, you ain't playing, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I've had so many games where like I feel like I have just been the you know not not to be like big headed, but just like dominant player. You play the game more correctly. You just put in the work in the game to make the game go as smoothly as possible in your favor. But because of hand control, you just lose. Yeah, and not to take anything away from Bancroft. Also, I'm sorry, Austin, would you like to go ahead? That was to say real quick, I was gonna comment on the game real quick. Uh this was a huge misplay on my part. I was like, I'm going to attack. I'm going to tap three and then swing with Android to get Defender. I was like, wait, I don't want him to awaken. What am I doing? So I stopped the attack. I'm like, I just wasted three energy. This is what I was talking about. My brain was so everywhere this match. I don't know how I won. I don't know how I won any of my games. Because I'm just <laughs> like at 15 places at once. And it was yeah, just- I think all of us during this particular match was just kind of throwing cards on field and just like, like, I was playing Blue Baby this night, and I was playing against Fluff's Topo Lock, and he would swing, and I was like, I would, I, I think I comboed off more negates than I actually played, even <laughs> Dude, though I had energy to play them. There was, <laughs> there was one, you had, like, three open energy, and I swung at you, and you were like, okay, no negate, and I was like, um, I'm gonna leave that at, like, 20,000 double strike. I didn't actually take into consideration that you weren't going to negate the attack, and then you comboed with, like, three negates. <laughs> uh, what? Yeah. Nobody, nobody was taking these games seriously at this point. Like, it was just kind of happening. I that mean, so not fun. to take anything away from Austin, like, I was definitely trying to win. Like... Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm glad that you did. I just, I was... It makes me feel better as a player that even with my off days and I make bad plays, I can somehow still like manage to recover. Like that makes me feel more confident in my playing than it does like anything else. Because if you can somehow manage to pull out wins when you're like just just not having a great day and you're just really frustrated and we're all having fun, I was like, man, this this really made me feel better about playing the game. Like I'm not gonna lie, there were times where I've almost quit this game. Just got so frustrated. I was like, I'll wait till next set. But I never not, I never did want to show up to the shop. So I always wanted to play something, you know, I always wanted to get something to play. Because I really like, like, I really love hanging out with you guys. It's a lot of fun to play with you guys. And I was so happy I found this because I think I'm going to play King Piccolo also next set. But with this, if I can still play this next set, I'm definitely going to play some uh, Cell Surge more. I just want to put this out there like, Bancroft and I put a lot of effort in in trying to make sure that we get a master set for every set for the benefit of the channel, right? Mm-hmm. So if there is something that like you're wanting to play that you have an interest in and you're feeling the game really dull out, like don't be afraid to reach out to Bancroft or myself. Like, like I would much rather be there and supportive of the community. Like I want to see you keep playing this game. I want people to keep playing this game. And and I just want, you know, th- that to just be said kind of out in the open because, like, I can tell that, like, you do do enjoy the game. And Jake and I go through this thing where, like, we'll beat ourselves up for the misplays okay. and we'll talk to each other about it and we'll kind of talk through, like, what was the better play here? What was the better play there? And, like, if you ever feel like you just did a stupid play and you're like, yeah, I feel like I cost myself the match or I feel like I'm a bad player because I did why, you know, talk to all of us like jimmy's a fantastic player jake's a really good fantastic player bancroft's fantastic you're fantastic dark has the potential to be fantastic if you (laughs) time into the game you know we're all there to make everyone better true yeah now that's why i really like this because 
I have always had like an issue with games that are competitive or like if you mess up, people are very like holier than thou about you, you know? No. Or like they try to hold it over your head that you, you mess up. Have tapped the balloon, yeah, man. Right here. And that you're like, and that they're a better player than you, and they want you to know that they're a better player than you. And then this community does not have that issue where we will joke around and throw shit, you know, like just joking about each other, like about bad plays, or like saying, like, hey, 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 you suck. Kind of joking, but it's all in good fun and love. And no, I mean everything that I say. I fuck you, Jimmy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will say I've not seen any of that like egotistical showboating. Or condescending, like, yeah, he fucked up. I deserve to win. Blah 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 blah. Like, right, I've right. I've never <laughs> seen that. Like, I'm better than, or he's better than, in this, you know, in in this particular community. And this is coming from a game, you know, for for me who's played multiple different TCGs and seen that. Yeah. Like, like someone walks away from the table and is like, yeah, so and so is such a dumb fuck. Like. I just blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we'll talk about how we win or how the game state goes, but there's ne- there's never any ego involved. It's not a cocky talk. It's a yeah. very, it's a very, like, yeah, like. Constructive. Like, I, 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 I passed with an open energy and let him combo out and hit him with Vegeta's final flash. Like, and I'm saying that as a way to, like, you know, educate, like, you know, be aware. I do play Vegeta's final flash. Yeah, like, like I've played it at shops in the early 2000s when I played Magic, and I, okay. granted I was a kid, but there were guys that wouldn't talk to you until you hit 2800 DCI rating. Like, yeah. and, and this ridiculous. Yeah, this goes to say, like we we aren't talking down on any other card game. This is just no, our I, experience I with Dragon oh, yeah. Ball specifically, and it's like I've from experience, like I've recently gotten into Commander. And there have been very helpful people, uh, I mean, Jake included, that have helped me get into Commander. But there's also been the same amount of people that talk down on me because I come from Dragon Ball. Yeah. yeah. So my, my biggest thing, sorry to interrupt you, go ahead. No, go ahead, bro. That was it. Okay. Like, my biggest thing was, is, I mean, it's mostly this community, like, I remember uh, I told Aaron this. I didn't. I did uh, my first match with you guys. The first time I ever came to the shop, I had a guy who cheated against me. My first ever game, and I lost. You know, and my first time ever to the shop, and I was like, man, I don't know. Like, I, think, I don't think guys are regular or not. I don't want to rub any. I don't want to, you know, like cause any friction. So I'm just gonna like not show up for a yeah. while. I, I, rem- I remember that. <laughs> and then Aaron was like, no, you you should have said something. Like, and then like that guy got banned after I mentioned it, and yeah. it was. That just kind of made me realize, like, oh, okay. So if so I was like, oh, so because X dude cheated, even though he's been there more than I was, it's not like a boys club, you know? We're like, oh, well, screw you, you know, you, you didn't catch it, kind of thing, you know? Nah, man, that, that's rules, a, that should be a, that should be a wide PSA. We should probably tack this on to a couple of videos. If you believe that somebody is cheating against you or playing unfairly against you. Tell your local judge. Or yeah. intimidating you. I remember yeah. being a kid uh, playing in the magic scene and like this never happened to me, but there were guys my age that guys, older guys would be like, just give me the win. Just give me the win. You're not going to go all the way. Just give me the win. And, you know, don't tolerate that. Like maybe not in front of them if you're worried, but tell your judge. They'll figure yeah. it out. You, you only have yourself to blame if you're not going to call somebody out. Yep for cheating like austin for the longest time never said anything and then once he spoke up and we looked into it that's when we made our decision and that's when austin started coming out to the shop and you know made this long lasting friendship and you know became a part of the community so please speak up as like the current head judge of our locals i would rather tell i'd rather tell a friend of mine that they need to back off and maybe like set out a couple weeks and then come back then lose new players. It's yeah. like it would it would have changed. Like it's changed. Looks. I've loved this community. Like I played this. I got my brother into it. You know, we got our buddy Jason into it. Like it's just kind of spread. And I really feel like if I didn't have that catalyst of that happening, we wouldn't have the certain shop dynamic we do now. For me, at least, you know, because you know, our, our the buddy Nick came in there. You know, like we've had a lot of people just come from that issue. And. You know, 
Dragon Ball has been a very honest community too. Like mm-hmm. I, I come from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh has a very dear place in my heart where like I will always love that game. I will always remember like GOAT format. I will always remember like plant secret format and how much I just loved that period of the game. But like I would never have trusted any of my Yu-Gi-Oh friends to use a $900 card. I would have never trusted like to walk away, you know, I, I would have, I would have just never trusted those people because yeah. they weren't trustworthy. They were cheaters. They were thieves, very immature. And like, sorry if like my old <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh friends listen to this, like, <laughs> the reputation is earned it's not me creating false accusations uh-huh. i'm not playing trump on twitter here um i yeah. but you all like i would i would let any of you all take a victory strike and play an event like yeah. without even thinking about it the dragon ball community is the only community where i can leave my trade binder and all my decks in my bag on the back of a chair and go to a restaurant and come back and everything's okay. Oh yeah, that was like you guys think crazy. Like I was like, man, I have like six hundred dollars of the cards here. Someone could take this and have like a heyday. And then I'm just, but with you guys, I totally trust it, and it's just been so great. Like trust is a very important thing in like in my personal life. That's like the thing I hold the highest, and that's what has really made me stay too. Like it's it all start once again from that. Wow, this random dude cheated. I waited, called him out, and they said, hey no, you can come back. He's gone now. And just that whole trust just built there immediately. Yeah. And with that being said, I would like to say I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. I was actually wrong. It wasn't uh, SCP-1132.5. Uh, it was actually the He Who Man with uh, Mellow Man. But don't worry about those guys. They're taken care of. Um, that being said, hope Why you all enjoyed. Like Bankrupt, hey, stop playing God. Stop creating genetic experiments in your sub-basement. If you know those references... Good for you. If you don't, I'm sorry for you. Uh, that being said, hope you all enjoyed today's episode. Hang on, of our podcast, <laughs> Heat Three, because that's what it ended up being instead. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are pushing 30 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping this up. Um, let's we'll start with Dark. Last words. If you're new to the game, like stay into it. Like especially if you're not like you know. Um, very interested in several many things but most of us have all been very interested in dragon ball and that's kind of what brought us all together dragon ball turned into a card game that we just beat the hell out of each other but still have laughs about it uh stick with it it's always been fun like i have the only bad experiences on my part and that's just my doing in my own brain aside from that every time i've played i'll always have fun so keep up with it if you do austin yeah you know what i just you know stay honest be kind have fun jake Uh, If you want to win, you have to practice. And I think I've said this before, but if you want good practice, you got to find good partners. The man with multiple names because he can't decide on which one he wants to stay on. Uh, Enjoying Imagine Dragons is an act of domestic terrorism. (laughs) And with that being said, Fluff, can you lead us out? Yep. If you guys know what Bancroft has referred to probably three times in this video, what is your favorite down below? Um, and if you don't know, I like this Angeli man. It, if you have to ask, you'll never know type of thing. But read your cards, know your plays, read your SCPs, and like always, bluff out.